Welcome to this web development course for the Django Web Framework. This is our project-based approach to learning web development with Django. In this course, you will build several applications, starting with a simple Hello World, progressing to more complex web applications. By the end of this course, you will feel confident creating your own Django projects from scratch. Django is a free open source web framework written in Python and it's used by millions of programmers every year. You don't need previous Python or web development experience to complete this course. Even a beginner can follow along. Most websites need the same basic functionality, connecting to a database, displaying content on a page, handle security properly and so on. Instead of creating all this from scratch, programmers have created web frameworks. Django has supports for common tasks in web development such as user authentication, templates, routes and views, admin interface, robust security, support for multiple database backend, and much more. This approach allows web developers to focus on what makes a web application unique instead of reinventing the wheel every time for standard secure web application functionality. Millions of programmers use Django to build their websites. We start by setting up a local development environment in module 1. We also look at how to use the command line and how to work with a modern text editor. In module 2, we build our first project, a Hello World app that demonstrates how to set up a new Django project. We'll also save our work with JIT and upload a copy to a remote repository on GitHub. In module 3, we make test and deploy a pages app that introduces templates and class-based views. We also add our first test and deploy the app to Heroku. Now in module 4, we build our first database-backed project, a message board app. Now Django provides a powerful feature that allows us to write Python code for the database tables. We'll also explore Django's built-in admin app that provides a graphical way to interact with our data. In modules 5 and 7, we'll build a robust blog app. We'll add forms and integrate Django's built-in use authentication system for sign-up, login, and logout functionality. In modules 8 to 15, we'll build a robust newspaper site, introduce custom user models. In module 8, module 9 covers user authentication, Module 10 will add Bootstrap in order to style and add style to the site. Modules 11 to 12 will look at how to implement password reset and change via email. With module 13 to 15, we add articles and comments to our project along with proper permission and authorizations. A link to the source code for all the projects covered in this course can be found in the lecture resources for each lecture. By the end of this course, you'll have the ability to build apps on your own and have a solid understanding of how Django works. In conclusion, Django is an excellent choice for any developer who wants to build modern, robust web applications with a minimum amount of code. Now, in the next module, we'll learn how to set up any computer for Django development. This module covers how to properly set up your computer to work with Django projects. We start with an overview of the command line and how to install the latest versions of both Django and Python. Then we discuss virtual environments, JIT, and working with a text editor. By the end of this module, you'll be ready to create and modify new Django projects. We'll use the command line extensively throughout this course. We'll use it to install and configure a Django project. While there are many possible commands we can use, in practice, there are about six commands that are frequently used. CD. CD means to change directory. LS lists the files in the current directory. PWD prints working directory. MKDAR makes a new directory, touch 
creates a new file. This command does not work on Windows. You can use the new item command on Windows. Open your terminal and let's try them out. Now let me change into the desktop directory. Note that my current location is automatically added. To confirm I'm in the proper location, I can use pwd which will print out the path of my current directory. Now let me create a new directory with mkdar followed by the name of the directory. In this case, I've called it new directory. Navigate into this new directory with the cd command. Add a new file called index.html with the new item command for Windows or touch command for Mac and Linux. I can use ls to list all the files in this directory. As you can see, the newly created index.html is there. I can use the pwd command to view my current directory. As you can see, I am in the new directory folder. Now return to the desktop directory with cd period period. Then use pwd to confirm the location. Developers use the terminal to navigate through their computer with ease. This approach is much faster than using a mouse. So in the next lecture, we look at how to install Python on the computer. If you are using Mac OS, just open a terminal and enter pro install python. Python comes pre-installed on most Linux distributions. On Windows, to install python, you have to go to the official python website. The link can be found in the lecture resources. Click on the window installer to download the executable. Double click on the file to start the installation process. While installing, you should ensure that you add Python to path by checking the radio button below. Once installation is complete, you can verify that Python is installed by opening a terminal and typing Python version. A virtual environment is a way to isolate Python projects from each other. This means that each project can have its own set of Python packages without affecting other projects. This is useful for a number of reasons. You should use a dedicated virtual environment for each new Python project. In this course, we shall use pipenv to manage our virtual environment. To install pipenv, we can use the command pip install pipenv. In the next lecture, we will see how to install Django. In this lecture, we'll install Django. Now open a new terminal and navigate to the desktop.
use mkdar to create a new directory called django move into the newly created directory with the cd command now use pipenv to install django to set up a virtual environment and to also install django within its virtual environment within this virtual environment Now, if you look into the directory, there are two new files, pip file and pip file.log. Now these files track the packages that are installed in the virtual environment. This makes it easy to reproduce the environment that, that a project was developed in and to share projects with other people. Now activate the virtual environment by running the pipenv shell command. If you're using the Mac or Linux terminal, you should see parentheses around the name of your current directory. This indicates that the virtual environment is activated. But since I'm using PowerShell, the parentheses are not shown. Now, you can type pip freeze to see the packages that have been installed within the virtual environment. Now, let's create a new Django project within this Django folder. Type Django admin start project source period. Don't forget to add a period at the end. Now the period at the end tells Django to create the project in the current directory. If you don't include the period, Django will create the project in a directory with the same name as the project. It doesn't really matter if you include the period or not, but I prefer to include the period. Now, if you list the files in this directory, you'll see that Django creates a new folder called source and manage.py file. We'll look at this later on. Now let's confirm everything is working by running the command python manage.py run server. This command starts a local Django server. Navigate to this link to view the Django welcome page. This indicates that everything is working as expected. To stop the server, type Ctrl plus C. Then deactivate the virtual environment with exit. We can always activate the virtual environment with pipm shell. In the next lecture, we look at how to install JIT, which is a version control system that helps to keep track of changes made to files in our project. In this video, we look at how to install JIT. JIT is a version control system that helps keep track of changes made to files in our project. With JIT, you can collaborate with other developers, track all your work via commits, and revert to any previous version of your code, even if you accidentally delete something important. Now, on a Mac, you can install JIT by simply running the command brew install JIT via terminal. Now, on Linux, simply run the command sudo apt install JIT. On Windows, you can install JIT for Windows by navigating to JIT scm.com. You can find this link in the lecture resources.
you can confirm the installation by opening a terminal and typing JIT version. Once installed, you need to configure the username and email address of your GitHub account you want to associate all your JIT commits with. Now you'll need a GitHub account for this. You can create a free GitHub account by navigating to github.com. We we'll look at this in later in later sections. Now within the terminal, type JIT config user.name, enter your name. And JIT config user.email and then enter your email. You can always change these configs later if you desire by retyping the same commands with a new name and new email. In the next lecture, we'll discuss text editors. In this video, we'll discuss the text editor options for our Django development. Choosing the right text editor is crucial for a smooth and efficient coding experience. One of the text editors I highly recommend for Django development is PyCharm. PyCharm is a powerful development environment specifically designed for Python. It offers a wide range of features tailored for Django development including intelligent code completion, debugging tools, version control integration and much more. PyCharm provides a comprehensive and seamless development environment for building Django projects. Another popular choice among developers is Visual Studio Code. VS Code is a lightweight yet feature-rich text editor with excellent support for Python and Django development. It offers a wide range of extensions that enhance your coding experience, such as Django-specific extensions, leading tools, and JIT integration. Many developers find VS Code to be a versatile and customizable option for their Django projects. Sublime Text is another text editor worth considering. It's known for its simplicity, speed, and extensibility. Sublime Text provides a clean and intuitive interface, allowing you to focus on your code. Like PyCharm and VS Code, it, of, it offers Django-specific plugins and extensions to streamline your Django development workflow. Many developers appreciate Sublime Text for its speed and responsiveness. Ultimately, the choice of text editor depends on your personal preferences and needs. While I, I primarily use VS Code for Django development, I understand the appeal for PyCharm and, and Sublime Text, so it's important to choose a text editor that aligns with your workflow, provides the features you require, and allows you to be productive. Whether I decide to use PyCharm, VS Code, or Sublime Text, or any other text editor, the most important thing is to find a tool that you feel comfortable and productive with. So this concludes module 1 which is primarily about 
to setting up our development environment. The next module will build our first Django app. In this module, we'll build a Django project that simply says hello world on the home page. I'll be using Visual Studio Code from now on. If you become stuck at any point, complete source code for this module can be found in the lecture resources. To begin, I open a new terminal within VS Code and navigate to the desktop. Create a new directory called Hello World. Navigate into this directory. I'll use pipenv to create a new virtual environment. Install Django. Now pipenv creates two new files, a pip file and a pip file.log that manage the project dependencies. Now activate the virtual environment by typing pipenv shell. Create a new Django project within the current directory and store the configuration files within the source folder. You can achieve this by typing Django admin start project source period don't forget to add the period at the end of the command you can see what your Django project looks like proceed to open the folder within a text editor if you're using VS code you need to activate the virtual environment for this project you can do this by opening the search bar and simply typing forward arrow python then select interpreter since i have created many virtual environments i'll search for the one that matches the name of my current directory and click on it to activate the virtual environment you can as well open the command palette by simply navigating to view in the drop down Click on the command palette or you can simply type ctrl shift p to open that palette if all this is hard for you simply open a new terminal and use the pipm shell command to activate the virtual environment now let us look at the project files generated by django the settings.py file controls the project settings urls.py tells Django which pages to build in response to a user request. wsgi.py, which stands for Web Server Gateway Interface, helps Django serve our eventual web pages. manage.py is used to execute various Django commands as running the local web server or creating a new app. Now Django comes with a built-in web server for local development which we can start by running the run server command. If you visit this link, you should see the Django welcome page. In the output, there is additional information including a warning about 17 unapplied migrations. Technically, the warning does not matter at this point. We can remove this warning by running python manage.py migrate. Type ctrl c to stop the server and enter the command python manage.py migrate. 
Now this command initializes the database. If you execute python money.py run server again, you should not see the warning again. In the next lecture, we'll look at how to build a simple Django app. This lecture will be a continuation of the previous lecture. We'll create our first Django app within the Django project. Now a simple Django project can, can contain more than one app. For example, a Django e-commerce app may have one app for user authentication, another for payments. Those are two different apps within one project. Now it's time to create our first app. In the terminal, create the server with control C. Then use the start app command followed by the name of the app which will be pages. Before running this command, you need to make sure that your virtual environment is active or activated. You can run the pip shell command to activate it. If you look again inside the directory, you will see the pages directory. Let's review what each file inside the pages directory does. admin.py is a configuration file for the built-in Django admin app. app.py is a configuration file for the app itself. The migrations folder keeps track of any changes to the models.py file so that the database and the models.py file stay in sync. test.py is for our app specific tests. Views are functions in Django that take a user's request and return a response. When a URL pattern matches, the corresponding view function is called and it determines what content to show on the page, often fetching data from the database models. Models.py, this file contains the database models for your application. Models define the structure of your data and how it should be stored in the database. Views often interact with models to get data to display on the page. Even though our app exists within the Django project, Django doesn't know about it. We need to explicitly add it. Open the settings.py file and scroll down to install apps. Add the new pages app at the bottom by typing pages.apps.pagesconfig. Now in the next lecture, we'll continue with this project and look at how to integrate URLs, views, models, and templates into our project. In this lecture, we'll look at how to use JIT. This lecture is also a continuation of the previous lecture. In the previous module, we installed JIT. Let's use it now. The first step is to initialize a JIT repository within the Hello World directory. Type JIT in it. You can type JIT status to view a list of changes. Now, add all changes by using the command JIT add A. A stands for all. You can type JIT status to view a list of changes. Now, it's time to commit all the changes 
along with a message describing what has changed by typing git commit m initial commit after that you can view the list of changes by typing git status It's a good habit to create a remote repository for your code for each project. This way, you have a backup in case anything happens to your computer. And more importantly, it allows for collaboration with other software developers. GitHub offers free private repositories for developers. Now to get started on GitHub, sign up for a free account. After signing up, you need to create a personal access token. To do this, navigate to the account settings. Click on developer settings. Then under personal access tokens, click on tokens, classic. Now generate a new token. Enter a simple description for your token. Under expiration, choose no expiration. Under select scopes, click on repo to be able to have full access on your repositories. After that, proceed to generate the token. Copy and save the token on your computer because you'll need it for authentication. After generating a personal access token for your account, we'll proceed to create a new repository. Now, navigate to the dashboard by clicking on the GitHub logo. Create a new repository. Enter the repository name, hello world. Make the repository private. Now scroll down to create the repository. Now we'll push an existing repository from the command line. To do this, scroll down and copy the commands and paste them into the terminal. A Windows credential window pops up. You can sign in with your browser, but I'll use the GitHub token instead. As you can see, my code has been pushed to the GitHub repository. If you get an error that the repository is not found, you need to configure your GitHub email and username by typing git config user.email enter your email and git config user.name and enter your github username we have covered a lot of fundamental concepts in this module we have built our first django application and learned how about django and its project app structure we learned about views, URLs, and the internal Django web server. 
and we worked with JIT to track our changes and pushed our code into our private repository on GitHub. In the next module, we'll build and deploy a more complex web application using templates and class-based views. In this lecture, we'll continue with our previous lecture and look at how to add an about page. Now the process for adding an about page is very similar to what we just did. We'll create a new template file, a new view, and a new URL route. Acquit the server with Ctrl plus C and create a new template called about.html. I'll use the terminal to create the file inside the templates directory. Then populate it with a short HTML headline tag. Create a new view for the page inside the pages folder. Then connect it to a URL at about slash. First, you need to import the newly created about page view. Start up the web server with python manage.py run server and navigate to the about page. In the next lecture, we'll look at how templates can be extended from other templates. It will be a continuation of this project. In Django, templates can be extended from other templates. This allows you to reuse common code and layout across multiple templates. Now to extend a template, you can use the extends template tag. This tag takes the name of the template to extend as its argument. Template inheritance is a powerful way to reuse code and layout in Django. Let's create a base.html file inside the templates directory. We could name this file anything, but using underscore base.html is a common conversion. To add URL links in our project, we can use the built-in URL template tag, which takes the URL pattern name as an argument. Remember how we added optional URL names to our two routes in pages, urls.py. The URL tag uses these names to automatically create links for us. Now the URL route for our home page is called home. Therefore to configure a link to it, we could use the following. 
URL home. You can add HTML completion to your Visual Studio code by installing third party extensions. Or you could change the language mode to HTML or Django HTML. Since HTML snippet is deprecated and no longer being maintained, I don't recommend it. Let's install PTR code for Malta. I hope it works well with HTML. Continuing with the best of HTML file, add a header tag with two links to our pages using the URL template tag. At the bottom, add a block tag called content. Blocks can be overwritten by child templates via inheritance. Well, it's optional to name our closing end block. You can just write end block if you prefer. Doing so helps with readability especially in larger template files. Update the home.html and about.html files to extend the base.html template. This means I can reuse the same code from one template in another template. The Django templating language comes with an extends method that we can use for this. Now, if your server is not running, you can restart it. Now you can see that the header is included in both locations. There's a lot more we can do with templates and in practice, you'll typically create a base.html file and then additional templates on top of it in a robust Django project. We'll do this later on in the course. In the next lecture, we'll continue with this project and look at how to write unit tests for testing this project. It's time to track our changes with JIT and push them to GitHub. We'll start by initializing our directory. Use JIT status to see all the code changes. Then type JIT add all to add all the changes. Finally, 
we'll add our first commit message. Navigate to your GitHub account and create a new repository. I'll call the repo pages app. Make sure to select the private radio button and then click on the create repository button. On the next page, scroll down to where it says push an existing repository from the command line. Copy and paste the commands there into the terminal. Now, in the next lecture of this module, we look at deploying our application to Heroku. Up to this point, we've been using Django's own internal web server to power the Pages application locally on the computer. But you can't share a local host address with someone else. To make our site available on the internet, where everyone can see it, we need to deploy our code to an external server that anyone can use. This is called putting our code into production. Local code lives only on the, on the computer. Production code lives on an external server available to everyone. There are many web server providers available, but we'll use Heroku because it's widely used and has a relatively straightforward deployment process. You can sign up for a free Heroku account on their website. After you confirm your email, Heroku will redirect you to the dashboard section of the site. Now we need to install Heroku's command line interface so we can deploy from the command line. We want to install Heroku globally so that it's available across our entire computer. On a Mac, use Homebrew install Heroku. On Windows, see the Heroku CLI page to correctly install either the 32-bit or 64-bit version. If you're using Linux, there are specific install instructions available on the Heroku website.
Now to verify that Heroku is installed, you can type Heroku version. Now you can type Heroku Edge to view the available commands. Type Heroku Login Edge to view the commands associated with the login option. I'll proceed with option I to log in with a username and API key. Now the password is deprecated and we can't use and, and it can't be used. Head back to your Heroku account and navigate to account settings. Scroll down to the API key and copy and paste it in your terminal. In the next lecture, we'll look at how to configure our application so it can be ready to deploy online with Heroku. We need to make the following four changes to our pages project so that it's ready to deploy online with Heroku. We need to create a new proc file we need to install Junicorn as a web server. Lastly, we'll make a change to the settings.py file. First, create a proc file, which is a configuration file specific to Heroku. Open the proc file and add this line. This says to use Unicorn, which is a web server suitable for production instead of Django's own server, which is only suitable for local development. Install Unicorn using pipenv. Now the final step is to add something to the settings.py file. Scroll down to the section called allowed hosts and add this wildcard. Now the allowed host setting represents which domains our website can serve. This is a security measure to prevent malicious attacks. However, we've used this asterisk, which means all domains are acceptable to keep things simple for now. In production, you have to explicitly list other domains to be allowed. Now, use JIT status to check our changes. Add the new files and then commit them.
finally push to github so we have an online backup of our code changes in the next lecture we we'll look at the final step which is which is to deploy the app to heroku Now the last step is to actually deploy with Heroku. If you've ever configured a server yourself in the past, you'll be amazed at how much simpler the process is with a platform service provider like Heroku. Now the process will be as follows. You have to create an app on Heroku and push the code. Add a git remote hook for Heroku. Configure the app to ignore static files which will cover in later modules start the heroku server so the app is live visit the app on heroku's provided url now in order to create a new app you need to verify your account by adding payment information navigate to your heroku account and add a payment method after verifying your account you can proceed to create a new Heroku app with Heroku Create. Heroku will create a random name for your, for the app. We only need to do one set of Heroku configurations at this point which is to tell Heroku to ignore static files like CSS and JavaScript, which Django by default tries to optimize for us. We'll cover this in later sections. For now, just run the following command. Now push the code to Heroku with git push Heroku main. If we had just typed git push origin main, then the code would have been pushed to GitHub, not Heroku. Adding Heroku to the command sends the code to Heroku. This is a little confusing for the first few times. Finally, we need to make our app live. So as our website grows in traffic, they need additional Heroku services. But for our basic example, we can use the lowest level. Now we are done. The last step is to confirm our app is live and online. If you use the command Heroku open, your web browser will open in a new tab with the URL of your new app. Now according to this information, my application has an error. So I have to check for the logs using the Heroku logs tail command to see how I can fix this error. Now copy the command into the terminal.
Now this concludes this module. You have built and deployed your second Django project. This time, we use templates, class-based views, explored URL configurations, added basic tests, and used Heroku. In the next module, we'll create our first database back project. In this module, we'll use a database for the first time to build a basic message board application where users can post and read short messages. We'll explore Django's powerful built-in admin interface which provides a visual way to make changes to our data. And after adding tests, we'll push our code to GitHub and deploy the app on Heroku. For local development, Django defaults to using SQLite because it's file-based and therefore by far the simplest backend to use. It does not require complex installation. Now by contrast, all of the other backends must be run on a dedicated server separate from Django itself, which can be quite complex to set up properly. In this course, we'll start by using SQLite as a local database and later switch over to using PostgreSQL as our production database on Heroku. Since we've already set up several Django projects at this point, in this course, we can quickly run through the standard commands to begin a new one. We need to do the following. Create a new directory for our code on the desktop called MB. Install Django in a new virtual environment. Create a new project called MB project. Create a new app called Posts. Open the project in VS Code. Ensure to activate the virtual environment for this project by either selecting a Python interpreter through the command palette or by using the ppf shell command in the terminal. Update the settings.py file. We must alert Django to the new app, which is posts by adding it to the bottom of the installed apps section. Then execute the migrate command to create an initial database based on Django's default settings. If you look inside our directory with the ls command, you'll see there's now a db.sqlite3 representing our SQLite database. To confirm everything works correctly, spin up the local server. Navigate to the link to see the familiar Django installed correctly page. Now the first task is to create a database model which can store and display posts for our users. Open the models.py file inside the posts directory 
and look at the default code which Django provides. Django imports a module called models to help us build new database models. We want to create a model to store the texture content of a message board post, which we can do as follows. Note that we've created a new database model called post, which has the database field text. We've also specified the, con the type of content it will hold, a character field. Django provides many model fields supporting common types of content such as characters, dates, integers, emails, and so on. Now that our new model is created, we need to activate it. Going forward, whenever we create or modify an existing model, we'll need to update Django in a two-step process. First, we create a migrations file with a make migrations command. Second, we build the actual database with a migrate command which executes the instructions in our migrations file. Stop the local server or open a new terminal where you can run these commands. The first command creates a migrations file with a migrations command. Migration files create a reference to, to any changes to the database models, which means we can track changes and debug errors. Now the second command, migrate, builds the, the database. Now in the next lecture, we'll explore the Django admin, which is a built-in app that provides a visual way to interact with it with the data.
In this module, we will build a blog app that allows users to create, edit, and delete posts. The home page will list all blog posts, and there will be a dedicated detail page for each individual post. We'll also introduce CSS for styling and learn how Django works with static files. As covered in previous modules, the first steps for setting up a new Django project are as follows. Create a new Django, create a new directory for the code on the desktop called blog. Install Django in a new virtual environment. Activate the virtual environment with pip env shell. Create a new Django project. Create a new app called Posts. Open the project in an editor. Select the interpreter for this project. This activates the virtual environment automatically every time. We open a new terminal window. Perform migration to set up the database. Start the server with a run server command. Update the settings.py file and add the newly created app to the installed apps list. If you navigate to this URL in the browser, you, sh you should see the Django welcome page. Okay. Initial installation complete. Next, we'll create a database model for blog posts. Open the models file inside the posts app and add the following code. The top line imports the class called models. We create a class called post that subclasses the models class. Using the subclass functionality, we, we automatically have access to everything within Django, within Django's database, models, and can add additional fields and methods as desired. Now the blog post will have a title with a 100 character limit. Now for the author field, we are using a foreign key which allows for a many to one relationship. This means that a given user can be the author of many different blog posts, but not the other way around. User references the built-in user model that Django provides for authentication. For all many to one relationships such as a foreign key, we must also specify an on delete option. Now for body, we are using a text field which will automatically expand as needed to fit the user's text. Now that our new database model is created, we need to create a new migration record for it. 
and migrate the change into our database. You could stop the server and run the commands, but I'll open a new terminal and leave the server running. Run the make migrations and the migrate commands to make a new migration record and also to migrate the change into the database. Now the database is configured, we need a way to access our data. First, create a super user account and follow the prompts to set up an email and password. When typing the password, it will not appear on the screen for security reasons. Now start, the, start running the Django server again with a command python manage.py run server and open the django admin login with your super user account i need to update the admin.py file so that it can show with a post model i just created Navigate back to the admin page and refresh the page to see the update. Let's add some blog posts. Click on the add button next to it, next to posts to create a new entry. Now that the database model is complete, we need to create the necessary views, URLs, and templates so we can display the information on our web application. Create a new urls.py file within the post folder. Now, this code should be familiar by now. I'm importing the soon to be created blog list view from from views.py now update our urls.py file in the source directory so that it knows to forward all requests directly to the blog app In the views file, add a blog list view to display the contents of the post model. We import list view and the database model. Navigate back to the URLs file and change blog post view to blog list view. The URLs and views are complete. 
The only thing missing is the templates. Start by creating a new templates directory with the two templates files home.html and best.html. Update the settings.py file so that Django knows to look for the templates in the templates directory. I'll add the base.html file inside the templates directory. You can set the language mode to HTML. This is good for writing HTML text. Now the code inside the content block can be filled by other templates. Update the home.html file. This template extends base.html and wraps our desired code with content blocks. I use the Django templating language to set up a simple loop for each blog post. Note that object list comes from list view and contains all the objects in our view. You can start your Django server if it's not running and refresh your browser. In the next lecture, we'll look at how to add static files to our project. We need to add some CSS which is referred to as a static file because unlike the dynamic database content, it doesn't change. I'll create a new directory called static. Just as we did with our templates directory, we need to update settings.py to tell Django where to look for these static files. Now this line tells Django to find the static assets inside the static folder. Now create a CSS directory within the static directory and add a new base file, a base.css file within it. Inside this file, I can change all titles to red.
finally we need to add the static files to the templates by adding load templates tag to the top of the base.html file or include a new file that explicitly references our new base.css file now start the server and refresh the browser and see the updated home page let me add a custom font and some more css simply insert this tag between the head tags we can find this content in the lecture resources then update the css file by copy and pasting the following code now you can find this code in the resources for this lecture in the next lecture we look at how to add individual web app web pages to the blog app In this module, we'll continue working on our blog application from module 5 by adding forms so a user can create, edit, or delete any of their blog entries. Forms are very common and very complicated to implement correctly. Anytime you are accepting user input, there are security concerns. Proper error handling is required. Fortunately, Django has built-in forms that abstract much of the difficulty and provide a rich set of tools to handle common use cases working with forms. Now to start, update the base template to display a link to our page for entering new blog posts. Post new indicates the name of the URL. Let's add a new URL configuration for the post new. For this post new. Now add an import for this view called blog create view at the top, which will create. Then add a URL, which will start with post slash new and name it post new Now let's create the view by importing a by importing a new generic class called create view at the top then subclass it to create a new view called blog create view Within block create view, I specify our database model, the name of the template, now for fields, for fields I set 
other data base fields I want to expose which are title, author and body. Now the last step is to create the template which I will call postnew.html. Now the top line we inherit from the base template as before. Use HTML form tags with a post method since we are sending data. Add a CSRF token with Django, which Django provides to protect the form from cross site scripting attacks. You should use it all all the time for your Django forms. Now then to output our form data we use form dot as underscore p which renders it within paragraph tags. Finally specify an input type to submit and assign it the value save. Start the server with python money.py run server and go to the home page. Click on the link for new blog post. Go ahead and try to create a new blog post and submit it. An error message is displayed. We did not specify where to send the user after successfully submitting the form. Let's send the user to the detail page after success. That way we can see their completed post. Now open the models.py file, add an import for reverse and add a new method. Try to create a new blog post again. Now after clicking the save button, you are now redirected to the detailed view page where the post app appears. Now the process for creating an update form so users can edit blog posts should feel familiar. We'll again use a built-in Django class based generic view and create the template URL and view. To start, let's add a new link to postdetail.html so that the option to edit a blog post appears on an individual blog page. Next, I create the template for the edit page called postedit.html.
now to the view I need to import update view and then subclass it in the new view Notice that in this view, I am listing the fields I want to use, i.e. the title and the body. I only want the title and the text to be editable. Now the final step is to add, is to update my URLs.py file, add the blog update view, and then the new route at the top of the existing URL patterns. Now if you click on a blog entry, if you click on a blog entry, you'll see the new edit button. In the next lecture, we'll continue with this blog app and look at how to add other views as well. The process for creating a form to delete blog posts is very similar to that for updating a post. We'll use yet another generic class based view called delete view. Start by adding a link to delete blog posts. Add this link inside the blog detail page. Then create a new file for the delete page template.
Now, update the views.py file by importing delete view and reverse lazy at the top. Then create a new view that subclasses delete view. I use reverse lazy as opposed to just reverse so that it won't execute the URL redirect until the view has finished deleting the blog post. Finally, create a URL by importing the blog detail or the blog delete view and adding a new pattern Now you can start the server again and refresh the individual post page and you'll see the delete post link. Now in the next lecture we'll continue with this blog up and see how to make tests to ensure that everything works to ensure that everything works well and as expected in the future. Now to make sure everything works well, we need to make some tests. In the previous lectures, I added a get absolute URL method to the model and new views for create, update and edit posts. That means I need to test these features. Let's update the test.py file. We expect the URL of our test to be at post slash one since there's only one post and the one is its primary key. 
Django ads automatically for us. Now to test create view we make a new response and then ensure that the response goes through status code 200 and contains a new title and body text Now for update view, we access the first post which has a primary key of 1 which is passed in as the only argument and we confirm that it results in a 302 redirect. Finally, we test our delete view by confirming that if we delete our post, the status code is 302, which is a redirect status code, since the item no longer exists.
now run this taste now and they should all pass Now, in a small amount of code, we've built a blog app that allows for creating, reading, updating, and deleting blog posts. This core functionality is known as is known by the acronym CRUD, which means to create, read, update, and delete. Now, in the next module, we look at adding user accounts and login logout and sign up functionality to our blog app So far we've built a working blog app that uses forms, but we are missing a major piece of most of applications, which is user authentication. Implementing proper user authentication is hard. Fortunately, Django comes with a powerful built-in user authentication system that we can use. Whenever you create a project, by default, Django installs the auth app, which provides us with a user object containing the username, password, email, first name, last name. We'll use this user object to implement login, logout, and sign up in our blog application. Django provides a default view for a login page via login view, via the login view class. All we need to add is a URL pattern for the auth system, a login template, and a small update to our settings.py file. First, update the source urls.py file. I'll place the login and logout pages at the account slash url. By default, Django looks within a templates directory called registration for a file called login.html for a login form. So I need to create a new directory called registration and the file within it. Now add the following code within our newly created file. When creating HTML templates, you can change the language mode from Django HTML to HTML to help you to autocomplete HTML tags for you. Now this code should be familiar by now. Now the final step is to, to specify where to redirect the user upon a successful login. We can set this with a login redirect URL setting at the bottom of the settings.py file. 
Now the user will be redirected to the home template, which is the home page. You can start up the Django server again with python money.py run server and navigate to the login page. Upon entering the login info for the super user account, I'm redirected to the home page. Notice that we didn't add any view, logic or create a database model because the Django all system provided both for us automatically. Update the underscore base.html template to display a message to the users whether they are logged in or not. Now we can use the is authenticated attributes for this. For now, we can simply place the code in a prominent position. Later on, we can style it more appropriately. Update the base.html file with new code starting beneath the closing header tag. If the user is logged in, we say hello to them by name. If not, we provide a link to our newly created login page. Now let's add a logout link instead that we direct to the home page. Now in the best.html file add a link for logging out just below the user greeting. Update settings.py to provide a, a redirect link. We can add it right next to our login redirect so the bottom of the file. If you refresh the home page you'll see it now has a logout link for log for logged in users and clicking it takes you back to the home page with a login link. In the next lecture, we look at how to implement the sign-up process. We need to write our own view for a sign-up page to register new users. But Django provides us with a form class called user creation form to make things easier. Now by default, it comes with three fields, username, password1, and password2. There are many ways to organize your code and URL structure for a, boost, for a robust user authentication system. Here, I'll create a dedicated new app called account for the sign up page. Add the new app to the installed apps in the settings.py file.
now add a new url path pointing to this new app directly below the auth app and the urls.py file inside the source folder now the order of the urls matters here because django reads the file from top to bottom let's go ahead and create our urls.py file inside the accounts folder I import the sign up view which I'll create later on. Its path is sign up, so the overall URL path will be account slash sign up. Now, head over to the views.py file inside the accounts folder. First, I import the built-in user creation form the Django provides. Also include the reverse lazy module function which we looked at earlier on, as well as the generic class. Subclass the generic class based create view in the sign up view class. Specify the sign up form to be the built in user creation form. On sign up, a user is redirected to the login page. I use reverse lazy to redirect the user to the login page upon successful registration. Now the template for this view is called signup.html which I'll create a later on. Now add a new file called signup.html to the templates directory. Add the following code to the file. This format is very familiar to what we've done before. We extend the base template at the top add form tags, use the CSRF token for security, display the forms containing paragraph, paragraph tags with the forms dot as underscore p and include a submit button. Start up the local server with python money.py run server and navigate to our newly created page. You notice there's a lot of extra text that Django includes by default. We can customize this using something like the built-in messages framework. But for now, try out the form. Now it's been a while since we made a JIT commit. Let's do that and push a copy of our code to github. First check all the new work that we've done with git status. Then add the new content and enter a commit message.
create a new repo on GitHub. By now, you should have mastered how to do this on your own. All done. Now we can deploy our app on Heroku, which I'll do in the next lecture. There are three changes we need to make so our app can be deployed on Heroku. We need to add a proc file, which is a Heroku specific configuration file. We need to install Junicorn to run as a production web server in place of Django's local server. We also need to update the local hosts in the settings.py file. Now, Start by creating a new proc file. This line tells Heroku to use Unicorn rather than the local server, which is not suitable for production. Now install Unicorn with pip -inf. Finally, update allowed hosts to accept all domains, which is represented by the asterisk. We can commit our new changes and push them to GitHub. To deploy on Heroku, first confirm that you're logged in to your existing Heroku account with the command Heroku login. Then run the create command which tells Heroku to make a new app or container for our app to live in. Now if you just run Heroku create, then Heroku will assign you a random name. However, you can specify a custom name but it has to be unique on Heroku. As you can see, blog is taken. Blog is already taken. So just leave Heroku to assign you a random name. Now configure JIT so that when you push to Heroku, it goes to the newly created app. Do this by specifying the app with its name.
now that we have static files which is CSS there's one more step to take Django does not support serving static files in production we'll use white noise to handle this for us so let's install it We need to update the static settings so it will be used in production. Add white noise to the installed apps above the built-in static files app. Also add the middleware as the third item. The order matters here. Near the bottom of the file, add new files for both static root and static file storage. Make sure to add and commit your new changes, then push it to GitHub. Finally, we can push the code to Heroku. Then add a web process so that Dino is running. Now the URL of the new app will be in the command line output. So you can run Heroku open to find it. With a minimum amount of code, the Django framework has allowed us to create a login, logout, and sign up user authentication flow. Under the hood, it has taken care of the many security gestures that can crop up if you try to create your own user authentication flow from scratch. However, there are currently no permissions, so any user can add, edit, delete, blog posts. This will be addressed in the newspaper project that takes up the remainder of the course. Django's built-in user model allows us to start working with users right away. 
as we just did with our block app in the previous modules. However, it's highly recommended to use a custom user model for new projects. The reason is that if you want to make any changes to the user model, for example, adding new fields, adding a custom user model from the beginning makes this quite easy. But if you do not create a custom user model, updating the default user model in an existing Django project is very and very challenging. Now we will use the abstract user model in this module where we start a new newspaper app properly with a custom user model. Now the first step as always is to create a new Django project from the command line. Create and navigate into a new directory for our code. Install Django with pipenv. Make a new Django project. Create a new app called Users. Open the project in an editor and activate the virtual environment for this project. After this, you can proceed to start the server. We did not run migrate to configure our database. It's important to wait until we've created our new custom user model. Open settings.py file. Then add the auth user model variable to tell Django to use our new custom user model in place of the built-in user model. I call the custom user model custom user since this model is in the users app so we refer to it as users.customuser. Now update the models.py file within users. Add a new user model which we'll call custom user that extends the existing abstract user. We also include our first custom field called age. Now stop the local server with Ctrl plus C 
and create a new file in the users app called forms.py. We'll update it with the following code to extend the existing user creation form and users change forms. Now for both new forms, we are using the meta class to override the default fields by setting the model to our custom user and using the default fields via meta.fields which includes all the default fields. Now to add our custom age field, we simply tag it at the end and will display automatically on our feature sign up page. Now the only other step we need is to update our admin.py file. We will extend the existing user admin class to use our custom user model. Stop the server and run make migrations and migrate to create a new database that uses the custom user model. Now I forgot to add my users app to the installed app list. Open the settings.py file and add the users the users app to the installed apps list.
run make migrations and migrate to create a new database that uses the custom user model. Now let me create a super user account to confirm that everything works as expected. Start up the web server and navigate to the admin page. If you click on the link for users, you should see your super user account as well as the default fields of username, email, first name, last name, and staff status. We can control the fields listed here via the list display setting for custom user admin. Let's do that now so that it displays email, username, age, and staff status. Refresh the page and you should see the update. With our custom user model complete, we can now focus on building, uh, building out the rest of the app. Now in the next module, we'll configure and customize sign up, login and logout pages. Now that we have a working custom user model, we can add the functionality every website needs. The ability to sign up, log in, and log out users. Django provides everything we need for login and log out, but we need to create our own form to sign up new users. We'll also build a basic home page with links to all three features so we don't have to type in the URLs by hand every time. Let's create a new templates directory and within it a registration directory as that's where Django will look for the login template. Now, we need to tell Django about this new directory by updating the configuration for DARS in settings.py. If you think about what happens when you log in or log out of a site, you are immediately redirected to a subsequent page. We need to tell Django where to send users in each case. The login redirect URL and logout redirect URL settings do that. We'll configure both to redirect to our home page, which we'll have now create now we can create for new templates login on html within the registration folder inside the templates directory 
underscore base.html home.html and sign up.html within the templates folder. Now the, the base.html will be inherited by every other template in our project. By using a block, we can later override the content within this block in other templates.
the templates are, are now all set still to go are our urls and views in the urls.py file inside the source folder we want to have the home.html template appear as the home page but we don't want to build a dedicated pages app just yet so we can use the shortcut of importing template view and setting the template name right in the pattern we also include the users app Now, create a urls.py file in the, US, in, the, in the user's app. The last step is our views.py file, which will contain the logic for our sign up form. I'm using Django's generic create view and telling it to use my custom user creation form to, re to redirect to login once I user signs up successfully and that my template is named signup.html Let me test everything out. Start up the server with Python money.py run server and go to the home page. Now this error shows up because I forgot to include the user app. I created it to the URL pattern list in the source.py file. Go ahead and click on login on the login link and use your super user credentials.
let's also log in to the admin to view our to user account click on users and you can see now everything is working but you may notice that there is no email address for a test user when you look back at the sign up page you'll see that it asks for username age and password but not email however we can easily change it return to user slash forms.py and change it now currently under fields we are using meta.fields which just displays the default settings of username and password but we can explicitly set which fields we want displayed so let's update it to ask for a for a username email and a password by setting it to username and email we don't need to include the password field because they are required so far the newspaper app has a custom user model and working sign up login and logout pages but you may have noticed our site doesn't look very good in the next module we'll add bootstrap for styling In this module, we will complete the authorization flow of our newspaper app by adding password change and reset functionality. Users will be able to change their current password or if they've forgotten it, to reset it via email. Letting users change their password is a common feature on many websites. Django provides a default implementation that already works at this stage. To try it out, I start by activating my virtual environment Start the server and log in. Then navigate to the password change page. Enter in your old password and then a new one. You'll be redirected to the password change successful page. Let's customize these two password change pages so that they match the look of our newspaper site. Django has created the views and URLs for us already. We only need to add new templates. Create two new template files in the registration directory. Update password change form.html with the following code. At the top, 
we extend base.html and set our page title. The form uses post since we are sending data and a CSRF token for security reasons. Go ahead and navigate to the password change page and see the changes. To make this form look better, I'll use crispy forms. Next up is the password change done template. It also extends base.html and includes a new title. However, there is no form on the page, just new text. Navigate to this page and see the changes we've made. In the next lecture, we'll look at how to add password reset functionality. Password reset handles of a common case of users forgetting their password. The steps are similar to configuring password change as we just did in the previous lecture. Django already provides a default implementation that we will use and then customize the templates so it matches the rest of our site. The only configuration required is telling Django how to send emails. After all, a user can only reset a password if they have access to the email link to the account. In production, we'll use the email service SendGrid to actually send the emails, but for testing purposes, we can rely on Django's console backend, which outputs the email text to our command line console instead. 
at the bottom of the settings.py file add the following code Navigate to the password reset page. Make sure the email addresses you enter match one of your user accounts. Upon submission, you will be redirected to the page that displays that password reset instructions have been sent. Since we've told Django to send email to the command line, the email text will now be there. Open your terminal and see the message. When you follow this link, you'll be redirected to the change password page. Enter in a new password and click on the button. We need to customize these templates so that they look like a newspaper site. As with password change, we only need to create new templates to customize the password reset. We start by creating four new template files. Within password reset form.html, enter the following code.
navigate to the password reset page to view the changes. Now, we can also update the other three pages.
So in the next module, we'll start building the newspaper app.
we are making progress but there is still the issue of our edit and delete views any logged in user can make changes to any article what we want is to restrict this access so that only the author of an article has the permission Django comes with a built-in mixin called user passes test mixin just for this purpose So our newspaper app is almost done. There are further steps we could take at this point, such as only displaying edit and delete links to the appropriate users. This would involve custom template tags, but overall, the app is in good shape. The last item needed is the ability for fellow logged in users to leave comments, which we'll cover in the next module. There are two ways we could add comments to our newspaper site. The first is to create a dedicated comments app and link it to articles. However, that seems like over engineering at this point. Instead, we can simply add an additional model called comment to our articles app and link it to the article model through a foreign key. We will use this approach because it's simpler. Now to start, we can add another table to our existing database called comment. This model will have a many to one foreign key relationship to article. That is one article can have many comments, but not the other way around.
Since we have updated our models, it's time to make a new migration file and then apply it. Add comment to our admin.py file so it will be visible to the admin page. Then start up the server with python manage.py run server and navigate to our main admin page. It would be better to just see all the comments related to a single post. It turns out we can do this with a Django admin feature called inlines which displays a foreign key relationship in a nice and visual way. There are two main inline views which are tabular inline and stacked inline. In a tabular inline, all model fields appear on one line while in a stacked inline each field has its own line. Update the admin.py file inside the articles folder as follows. Now go back to the main admin page and see the changes. Personally though, I prefer using tabular inline as it shows more information in less space.
since the comment model lives within our existing articles app we only need to update the existing templates for article underscore list.html and article underscore detail.html to display our new content we don't have to create new templates and mess around with the urls and views what we want is to display all comments related to a specific article to start add a related name attribute to our comment model a good default is to name it the plural of the model holding the foreign key since we just made a change to our database model we need to create a migrations file and update the database Now we are done with this newspaper app, you can proceed to deploy it to Heroku and commit all the changes and push them to GitHub. Congratulations on finishing this web development course with the Django Web Framework. After starting from absolute zero, we've now built five different web applications from scratch and covered all the major features of Django, which are templates, views, URLs, users, models, security, testing, and deployment. You, you now have the knowledge to go off and build your own modern website with Django. As with any new skill, it's important to practice and apply what you've learned. When you're starting out, I believe the best approach is to build as many small projects as possible and incrementally add complexity and research new things. Web development is a very deep field and there's always something new to learn. If you'd like to learn more about Django and all that it has to offer and understand how to build web applications that can serve millions of users, I suggest checking my follow-up course for professionals. It tackles many challenges around building truly production-ready websites such as using Docker, a production database locally like PostgreSQL, handling payments, environment variables, advanced user registration, security performance, and much more.